to the power of God, I, I don't know, but there are people God is raising to become mighty vessels. I just saw an anointing rest on you, this role. In the name of Jesus, I don't know where you are, but I pray may that grace now, let it rest upon you and shift you to a new dimension. In the name of Jesus Christ. Welcome to Christocentric Message. On this channel, you are going to get soul-lifting messages, faith-based content, prayer drills, and videos that would help you grow spiritually. Remember to subscribe to the channel, like the video you are about to watch, and comment on it. Stay blessed. Friends, there's something about the presence of God. Every time you come into an atmosphere of God's presence, I'd like you to know that when the portals of heaven are opened, there are several things that happen. The impartations of the Spirit, the communication of the wisdom of the Spirit. Now, a lot of the things that happen to believers in the presence of God are so supernatural that it takes for you to be spiritual, to be able to acclimatize yourself to the atmosphere of the glory. Because the Bible says the natural man of this people is mighty. There are three dimensions of God's presence. As taught in scripture. The first dimension of his presence is what the Bible calls his omnipresence. His ability to be everywhere at the same time. The psalmist said, where can I hide from your presence? Where can I hide from your presence? He is suffering. He began the beginning. The Bible says his eyes run through and fro. Searching the entire earth. And so when you talk of the omnipresence of God. It's his ability to be everywhere. At the same time. When Adam sinned in the garden. The Bible says they went and they hid. And in Genesis chapter 3, the Bible says, and they had the voice of God. The Hebrew word says, they had the talking spirit walking in the cool of the day. And he said, Adam, where art thou? And Adam said, I heard thy voice and I hid. Because I was naked. Where can I hide from your presence? That's the reason why the Bible says how that he has the ability not only to scan his eyes around the world but to scan the hearts of men and judge the intents of the hearts of men. He is omnipresent. It's an ability that is exclusively for the God class. His ability to be everywhere. That's the reason why all believers all over the world can lift up their voice to God for help. And at the very same time, he's able to respond to their needs. He's able to relate with you. While he's there with you in the room, he's there on a crusade ground. He's there helping a woman to deliver safely. He's there helping somebody out of accident. His omnipresence. Listen, sometimes we need to know the qualities of God to help us worship Him. Because a lot of times we think He's like one of us. But when we understand that although we are partakers of His divine nature, we didn't give Him the nature. He's, he brought us into a participation of His nature. But then there are certain dimensions of His nature that has not been given to us to participate. That's the dimension that makes him God. One of it is his omnipresence. No man has in himself the ability to be everywhere at the same time. Even Satan does not have that ability. In the book of Job chapter 1 the Bible says the sons of God gathered and Satan was in their midst and God asked him from whence and he said from running to and fro. He was at a specific location. But God is in this place and all over the world where true believers are gathered in the name of Jesus Christ he's there in their midst his omnipresence the second dimension of him 
is what I call his Emmanuel dimension. The Bible says, where two or three are gathered in his name. He says he's there. Emmanuel means God in the midst of his people. God with us. His ability that every time we gather in the name of Jesus, we are confident that he's there in our midst. That's the dimension of him that gives us confidence to agree with one another and pray and say, Lord, we commit this issue and that issue and we are sure that he's in our midst. Listen, you need to learn to look at God not just as a king seated far in some galaxies. You need to realize that you are before the throne. I like that beautiful song. So we bow as we enter the throne room and we do what? Very beautiful. You are worthy, thou art holy, there is none like you in your presence. That is where I must be. Very powerful song. The Bible says, let us therefore come boldly to the throne of grace. If you couldn't come, the Bible will not ask you to come. So we have the ability to be in the throne room. We have the ability to be with him where he is. Otherwise, there's no point talking about koinonia. Many of us see God high up there. And sometimes we come out of our rooms and say, God, I hope you can hear me. But you need to realize that he's how did darling jack put it so close i believe you're holding me now in your hands you never let me go he's so close he's not just far up there so his emmanuel dimension begins to give you the consciousness that he's not only alive and around but he's with you the Bible calls him our ever-present help in time of need. The one who sticks closer than the mini brother. The third dimension of his presence is called his Shekinah. His manifested presence. Where not only is he in the midst of his people, but there is an awareness of your spirit, your soul, and your body. The environment, animate and inanimate things, realize that their maker is in their midst and you are engulfed in the glory and in his presence and that's what causes the shaking the falling down and all of the supernatural manifestations the bible says when that dimension happens it says the mountains keep like lambs the awe and the majesty of his presence when israel complained and said is it only Moses that God will speak to he said all right sanctify yourselves I want to show you a sample of what my Shekinah looks like the Bible says when he showed up and they heard his voice together they said no just speak to Moses anything you tell him we will do the presence of God is not only majestic it's fearful fearful and that's the dimension from where miracles are released that's the dimension from where healings are released. That's the dimension from where impartations are released. So you sit under that atmosphere of his Shekinah and you step out in a realm of glory. Suddenly you begin to see that there is an overflow of his life and glory in your life. There is beauty that emanates from your life. That's why we spend time in worship. Because we want to allow not only our spirits but our souls and our mortal bodies to interact with that atmosphere of his Shekinah and suddenly you find out that tumors disappear, growths disappear because everything that symbolizes death is always swallowed up in victory hallelujah praise the Lord and so I'd like you to always have that consciousness that every time we come before God's presence, 
every time we come before God's presence our hearts must be open to just soak in that atmosphere of his glory realize that you're not just singing you're not just helping the worshipers but you are standing in the presence of God from where the life of that river the life of that glory rubs up upon your life and when you step out see let me tell you something you will not realize how changed you are in God's presence until you step back in the midst of the darkness and then you see how much illumination comes out from your spirit you find out that suddenly certain vocabularies just edit themselves out of your life you don't know when that transition happened it happened in the glory certain decisions certain decisions and resolutions are crystallized in your spirit you begin to make up your mind the grace to walk in certain realms is imparted in his presence that's why we gather here hallelujah so lord we thank you for the gift of your presence we really thank you for your presence and tonight as we behold you let us be changed into that which we are beholding the bible says now the lord is that spirit and where the spirit of the lord is there is liberty he says but we all with unveiled face beholding as in a mirror the glory of god we are changed from one dimension of glory and so let us be changed in the name of jesus hallelujah romans i'll just talk very briefly of Romans the Lord is seeking men and women who will carry the life the power the glory of the kingdom and permeates the systems of the world this has been his singular message and let me tell you something about God when God calls him and the Bible says that is Jesus Christ saw different kinds of people scattered around and he called them come follow me he called Nathaniel he called Peter he called the disciples when God calls a man he doesn't send the man immediately he calls you then the next thing is that he makes you he said come and I will make you and for three and a half years by the teaching of his word by the experience of the miraculous things he did he made them and then the Bible says he sent them at a certain time the 12 to go and test run the things that he was imparting in them the Bible says they came back rejoicing then he sent them alongside 70 others and the Bible says they came to him rejoicing they said even the devils were subject to us in thy name but even at that dimension they were still in the making process listen it pays to stay in the school of the spirit sometimes you see the caliber of people that God is raising here I, I have the privilege of knowing a lot of us here and I know the dimensions that we are functioning in the spirit terrible realms in the spirit yet the Lord is still subjecting us to the making process because when he's done with us and he sends us out we will be absolute wonders to our generation that's what he's doing he said he that bears fruit I will prune sharpen refire that he may bear much fruit. That's what God is doing. So when God calls a man, he makes him. Some of you may be wondering, Lord, with this level of anointing, you have still not sent me. And God says, sit down. You need more than you have now to touch your generation. This may be sufficient to touch Samaru, but not the nations. This may be sufficient to touch Zaria, but 
not the nations. This may be sufficient to touch Nigeria, but not the nations. Bible says, who through faith subdued kingdoms. Every time God keeps reminding me that I'm still in the making process. I tell people, if you think you've seen anything about my life, this is only the beginning. Because I'm still in the baking room of the spirit. That's why, you see, when you are conscious of being made, no level of glory will carry your, it will, will enter your head such that you lose out on the remaining training. After doing terrible things in righteousness, you go back to the secret place. But a day will come when the master will tap you and say, this is my beloved son and he will command the world to hear you. When he makes that decree, the doors of nations become open out of their own volition. No, you become an infant of fire. Nobody will be able to stop you. Hallelujah. Romans chapter 8. Verse 18. For I reckon, oh by the way, I I decided to suspend. We're taking a series on the ancient parts. How many of you were blessed last week? Hallelujah. But I decided to just fold that series and keep it aside until we're in full strength because it's a very critical teaching that I want everybody to be part of. Hallelujah. And so I just decided to wrap it and keep it ancient secrets. We began by examining Jeremiah chapter 6. He said, ask for the ancient parts and walk in it. And we spoke last week about the anointing. I wanted to complete the series. It's a long series. It will take us at least four weeks to explore some of the things. And so I just decided to keep it until we have all our other members around so that we can flow together. Hallelujah. And so tonight I'm going to be teaching very briefly on the pathway to sonship. The pathway to sonship pathway to sonship I trust that the Lord will grant us grace you would have noticed that here we don't just teach results we teach the process because when you understand the process and the principles then the results are inevitable hallelujah the pathway to sonship Romans chapter 8 Verse 18. For I reckon that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory that shall be revealed in us. 19. For the earnest expectation of creation wasted for the manifestations of the sons of God. For the creation was made subject to vanity, not willingly, but by reason of him who had subjected the same in hope. Because the creation itself also shall be delivered from the bondage of corruption into the glorious liberty of the children of God. 22. For we know that the whole creation groaneth and travaileth in pain together until now. And not only they, but ourselves also, who have the first fruits of the Spirit, even ourselves grown within ourselves, waiting for the adoption that is the redemption of our body. Look up. I want to share with us very briefly on the process, the making of a son. Now, there are many Greek words that were used in scripture to connote uh, sons. Many of them, but there are two interesting ones I want to teach on. The first is called technon. And the second is called weos. Technon and weos. Two powerful words. Hallelujah. Now, I'd like you to understand that when you give birth to a child please watch this when you give birth to a child that child comes with um, a thinking process and a mindset that does not permit him to do a lot of things in that environment hallelujah and over time as the child begins to watch other people elderly people 
and as he begins to interact with his environment certain things begin to become evident in the child's life when he's always lying down and he watches people walking one day he will attempt to begin to do what they are doing are you following me now and then he begins to try to talk then he begins to try to reason and over time there is a metamorphosis in that child from complete childhood he becomes a teenager and then uh, an adolescent and then an adult and so on and so forth that's the way it is in the spirit and we are in their need of sons we have a lot of children in the body and there is need for men the bible says that god desires to bring many into sonship now sonship is not just the issue of confessing and saying i'm a son i receive it you don't receive sonship by impartation it's a door it's a process it's a making just like how many of you have seen little children who try to behave like adults you just see a little child and then he he takes with one and tries to gum it around his face in an attempt to look like an adult does that make him an adult that very act proves that he's still a child hallelujah and so we have a lot of believers who camouflage as sons i need you to know tonight that sonship is not just about confession you don't just receive sonship i know that many of you would say ah, the bible says to them that believe in him he gave you the right to be called sons of god i'm going to explain something to you a lot of translations in especially in the old king james certain words were interchanged two of them was weos and technon technon talks of a child a baby one who is has inadequate knowledge and education and information one who is not able to do a lot of things and then we are stocks of one who by reason of knowledge has attained the same status with his father so there is an interplay of those words in scripture and many of them have been interpreted sons sons are you following me now when you get born again when you accept jesus christ into your life the first thing that happens is that there is a translation i've always used this let me use two people i like being very graphic please aaron come sir come just one here one here hallelujah now this is the world system this is the kingdom where satan is lord a system that was built by cain the bible says cain departed from the presence of god and he built a city and named it after his son Enoch. And the Bible says that all kinds of rebellious things happen in that city. A city that did not recognize and work with the government of God. Hallelujah. And so, we are born with this system. We live here. There is a law in this realm. It's called the law of sin and death. That's the law that is responsible for greed and wickedness. And oppression and selfishness. The spirit of the power of the air that walks in the sons of disobedience. And so, we are all born in this realm. But every time we accept that Jesus is Lord of our lives, there is a translation. You need to understand this. You're not, you may not feel anything happen to you. How be it in the spirit, there is a translation from this kingdom, the kingdom of darkness, into the kingdom of light. The kingdom of God's dear son. Hallelujah. But now, what we do not realize is that when you are born again, that initial experience affects only your spirit. Are you following me? This is where a lot of people miss out. Let me give you a scriptural proof. When Israel came out of Egypt, that's a type of our coming out. Are you following me now? When Israel came out of Egypt, it was a type of our coming out. But there needed to be a separation. Are you following me? What the Red Sea did was it caused a permanent separation between Egypt and Israel. And they sang, they said, I will sing unto the Lord for he has triumphed gloriously. The horses and his riders, the systems, have been thrown into the sea so many believers what they do is they just come out of egypt and stop 
and then later on they find out that Pharaoh is still looking for them the first step to get to the promised land is to come out of Egypt but that's not the only step the second step is that there must be a passing through the sea the Bible says that we'll be washed by the the regenerating of the water there is an experience of passing through the water in the spirit and that's what causes the Bible says, except you be born of water and of the spirit he said you cannot enter the kingdom of God so it's one thing to see the kingdom he was speaking to Nicodemus you can see the kingdom when you step out of Egypt but it takes a washing of the water and of the spirit for you to experientially begin to enter the realities of the things of the spirit there are so many believers that see the kingdom they can describe what it looks like but it takes the interaction of the water so that we begin to step into the reality of it so there is a translation when you come into this realm the ministry of the holy spirit changes in your life because he that told his ministry would because as a non-believer his ministry is to convict you of sin of righteousness and of judgment now when you become a believer and he comes to live inside you his ministry changes he begins to be unto you an advocate a teacher a strengthener a guide a standby an intercessor he begins to bring the reality of the revelation of the word into your spirit and he begins to teach you the principles of this kingdom as he teaches you the principles of the kingdom grace is imparted upon you to begin to walk experientially in that reality hallelujah and so i like you to know that it is true that in christ we are all sons but it takes the revelation there is a making that brings you into an experiential position of sonship so there are many of us that look like sons but in reality we are not experiencing the benefits and the blessings that follow sons the bible says an heir as long as he's a child galatians 4 different not from a slave although that child is royalty but because he must be made there is a process that makes him in the process of the making of that child they teach him the attitude of royalty they teach him how to speak like royalty they teach him how to walk like royalty they teach him how to respond to situations like royalty and over time when he is, has been tried and proven then certain riches of that kingdom is now committed to him hear me friends there are certain realities in the spirit that only sons can touch no matter how you shout there will keep being a call upon your spirit man to step up into the reality of sonship hallelujah bringing many sons into glory and so the holy spirit begins to walk upon your mind the Holy Spirit begins to teach you the principles of the kingdom. Hear me. The major work of a believer, of the Holy Spirit in the life of the believer, is to change his mind. Now, don't take this for granted. The major work of the Holy Ghost. Um, some years ago, when, whenever I read this scripture, is anything too hard for me to do? How many of you have read that scripture? The, the thing that bothers me about that scripture is the word too. Why will God who is almighty say is there anything too hard? Why is it too hard? And one day I asked the Holy Spirit I said what's the mystery behind this too hard that God is saying? And God says the reason why it seems to be too hard is that I have to keep getting you until you come into alignment with me. And that's the difficult part of the process because I am always able but sometimes it takes years for him to begin to touch you until you come to a point where you are in synchrony with heaven and then at that point the realities of the things of heaven can begin to flow into your life the primary
primary challenge of believers is that we are yet to synchronize our minds there is there is need for a synchrony with the things of heaven such that it always will be done on earth as it is done in heaven our inability to synchronize our lives and our minds with the principles by which heaven is governed listen the same principle god is trying to give you here on earth many of them are the same principles that govern heaven love the fruit of the spirit that's the principle that governs heaven and because everyone in heaven there is perfect synchrony to those principles so heaven is the way it is so why is the earth this way because the sons who have been given the ability to rule the earth have not yet allowed themselves to come into synchrony and any life that will painstakingly push himself to that point suddenly begins to experience heaven within that environment that's the reason why you can see two people living in the same environment and one is walking in the reality of heaven's life and the other is walking in another reality because the other one has made himself synchronized your mind the bible says do not be conformed to this world but be ye transformed be ye changed by the renewing of your mind every day of my life i keep seeing again and again that the singular secret for victory in this life is when a man can stand in synchrony with God you will become an awesome wonder any man you see today who has manifested certain levels of the anointing or certain levels of notable impact has brought himself by the activity of the spirit to that point where the laws of God becomes the laws that your life is governed by there is perfect synchrony at that point heaven finds expression in your life and in your atmosphere and so from being a child the Holy Ghost begins to walk on their minds the Holy Ghost begins to teach them the activities of the Spirit the Holy Ghost begins to teach them the mindsets that the Word of God brings suddenly you begin to find out that over your finances there is a principle it's not magic it's not mistake it's not God liking some people and hating some people suddenly you begin to find out from the word that there is he that scattereth and yet increaseth and there is he that withholdeth more than his meat and tends to poverty suddenly you realize that when you bring in all your tithes into the storehouse the heavens are open over you and the devourer is rebuked suddenly you understand that he that sweat sparingly will reap sparingly and he that sweat bountifully will reap bountifully as the holy ghost begins to bring you now it's not a it's not one day's job because when the holy spirit brings to your mind the principles of the kingdom the flesh in you will wrestle it because it knows that it will no longer hold the place of authority when the laws of god come into place and so it is a price because that will mean dropping greed for instance dropping selfishness helping men not being weary in well-doing and it takes the grace of god but the beautiful thing is that as the holy ghost shows you the laws he stands by you to ensure that you enforce it then the holy ghost begins to teach you about your health he tells you that there is a system in the kingdom that can keep you free of sickness and it looks impossible until you painstakingly cooperate with him then you come to a point where you begin to understand the activity of the spirit in your body that if the same spirit that raised up christ from the dead dwells in this mortal body not just in your spirit that there is a divine ability there is an energizing that he causes it's like a drug he sends it all over your body and there is a quickening now it takes a while because even while you are reading that scripture the devil will bring every kind of thing 
your body will refuse to cooperate and Paul said I keep my body under subjection in other words you say body you are not above me this law must you must bend till you cooperate with this principle then Jeremiah chapter 1 verse 12 comes to play he watches over his word he's alert and active waiting for your obedience so that you'll be committed to a performance see a time will come in life when when certain realities of the kingdom have not entered you you will die for many of us who like running for ministry ministry a time will come you will minister like this and you know that if you do not understand the quickening ministry of the holy spirit you will drop dead one day on stage because a time can come you will have ministrations all through the week and there are several things you have to attend to but when you understand that there is the quickening of the spirit there is no there's nothing like breakdown no it's supernatural they see an ordinary man but there is another law walking in your members the pathway to sonship where the word of god begins to paint your new reality your reality begins to be framed by the word of god and then you understand that you have been raised up with christ that when he died not only did he die for you but you died in him that when he was buried you were buried in him that when he defeated satan when these brothers were in him by covenant this, this, uh, defeating satan and when he rose again the bible says he raised us up and made us to sit with him in heavenly places far above the witches in every village far above principalities and powers and every name that is named when that reality begins to enter your spirit it may take a while but when that happens there will be a signal in the realm of the spirit and every devil will know that this light has entered your spirit at that point there will be nothing of satan in you and you can stand and then that scripture will now become a reality that in my name they shall cast out devils you enter an atmosphere that threatens hell jesus walked upon the earth and showed us an example of sonship when he stepped into an environment the demons suddenly began to operate we went for a crusade after um, last week week before last we went for a meeting somewhere in southern kaduna and as they just checked on us into the hotel we just lay down and i decided to take some rest as soon as i just put my head suddenly i sensed a very evil presence and suddenly i just turned and there was a demon standing before me he said what have you come to do here i shared with them that's what he told me he said what have you come to do here listen when you become a son when your feet steps into a territory there is a ripple effect in that territory they know that something has happened that's why you see the devil tries to fight some meetings there are some meetings he doesn't bother he even helps to plan it for them because it makes no relevance whatsoever but then there are some meetings that shake hell to its foundation and if the devil begins to beat left right and center because it's the manifestation of sons men and women who understand the laws of the spirit men and women and, and women who have mastered the art of bringing their bodies and their minds in alignment to cooperate with the holy spirit and so they can stand and make decrees and command nations to be open and the gates of nations will swing open so how are sons made simple very simple there's no complication about it the difference between a child and a son is knowledge understanding and obedience the difference between a child it says when i was a child first um, corinthians chapter 13 verse 14 when i was a child i thought like a child i understood like a child i acted like a child he said, now that I'm a man, I've laid aside these childish things. The difference between a child and a son, technon and weos, 
is that transition in the spirit the lord begins to walk the first thing is knowledge hosea chapter 4 and verse 6 the bible says my people are destroyed my people are destroyed my people are destroyed not because satan is powerful until you understand these realities in the spirit satan will keep looking like a mountain i refuse to see him as a mountain hallelujah it's the pathway to sonship you come to a point where there is sufficient knowledge the bible says in first peter chapter 1 verse 3 i believe it says according as his divine power have given us all things not some all things that pertain unto life and godliness how through the knowledge of him that has called us into glory and virtue the next verse says wherefore has he given us this exceeding great and precious promises that by them we might be partakers of his divine nature having escaped this corruption through lust and so the knowledge of the principles of the kingdom is what we need first of all are you following me say after me knowledge knowledge say one more time knowledge that's what we need that's why you hear people like pastor chris say all you ever need is wrapped up in the word he says go for the word go for it is the truth go for the word we go for many things all kinds of things what we need is to stay with the word to stay with the word when the illumination of the word arises in your spirit it sets you up it brings you into sonship the activity of the word of God upon your spirit and upon your mind and upon your body is what brings you into sonship knowledge the second is understanding the Bible says with all you're getting get understanding I shared it um, in a, God bless you sir I shared it in a Sunday meeting but then I'll share it again I want to tell you the difference between knowledge and understanding and I want to use a very practical example it's believed that we guys don't know how to cook very well praise the Lord now it's not like we don't know how to cook we know we don't understand how to cook you, you get it now because the same ingredients the ladies are using that's what we are using why are the results different they know when to put what the, are you following me now the guys for instance jollof rice if i tell you give me a quick tip on making jollof rice that's very easy hot water rice comes in add oil add uh, uh, crayfish add whatever you have left close it trust god to do the rest now and it has produced some results in our lives because we have been able to eat the food are you following me now but when when a lady is cooking because by experience she has not only been taught what to do but how to do it she knows that okay after five minutes you add this you are finished adding your own since she has not added her own there are certain things that they add only five minutes when the food is about to be done and then the same ingredients two of you went to the market and then you leave your food and eat out that's the difference between knowledge and understanding are you following me now knowledge is just acquiring the information knowing that these are the things to be done but understanding gives you the steps it tells you that when you get to this point knowledge says tight and be blessed understanding says this is the attitude this is how you tight are you following me now knowledge says give understanding says this is how you give knowledge says the just shall live by faith understanding says this is the dynamics of faith you hear the word you believe you step out are you following me now so what we need is not just knowledge many believers have knowledge rema 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 that has not translated into anything we have a lot of rema but what we lack is understanding so in proverbs he said with all you're getting don't just know that this is what needs to be done you must understand how it should be done 
that's why some people walk through some situations as if Satan does not exist and yet others are still in that situation are you getting blessed understanding the understanding of the word there are several people that have thought about faith there are several people that have thought so many things about faith but there are few people that understand how faith works and it's those who understand and apply it that get the results it's one thing to say i live by faith hallelujah in the name of jesus i live by faith that's just step one but because we do not understand the operation of faith what the bible calls the spirit of faith so the making of a son is that there is a translation the word of god begins to walk in you children begin to live and manifest the character of egypt although they are out of egypt you still begin to see bitterness envy and all of these things and the holy ghost begins to walk in you remember our prayer last week we prayed about the heart condition god begins to attack your heart thoroughly until he brings out everything that does not line up with his principles then you find out that your heart is pure towards god and then you begin to experience certain riches of the kingdom the making of sons so i like for you to know that you don't just receive sonship as an impartation if it were so nobody would still be pressing towards the deep things of the spirit again because as long as we give our lives to christ we become sons but hear me friends it takes a while and the pathway for sonship is that you realize that although you are a child of god you are technon the word of god the understanding of his principles the knowledge the understanding and then the obedience the bible says they had the word like we did but the word did not profit them not being mixed with faith obedience you must be diligent and obedient you must be diligent and obedient hear me friends your obedience until you have been hammering on this issue of obedience if your obedience is not complete you will never step into the reality of sonship sons are those who have learned how to obey jesus said my meat is to do and finish the will of him that has sent me even at gethsemane he said father if it be thy will take this cup of me but he said nevertheless not my will sons have come to a point where they are resolutely obedient even unto death even unto death an heir as long as he's a child friends koinonia is an avenue for us to step up into the reality of sonship enough of this oppression by demons we come shout in tongues sing and dance and then we go back and we are badly oppressed by satan oppressed by sickness oppressed by failure the, that's the reason why our light unbelievers cannot understand what we are shouting about because the same things that keep them down are the same things that keep us down the same limitation they have is the same limitations we have and so they truly cannot see any difference but when we step into sonship they begin to see something different about our lives that when they break down there is supernatural strength for you to move forward that when they are communicating with the wisdom of men you come with the wisdom of god there's something about your life that attracts them i told god i said lord i'm tired of reading about sonship i want to walk in the reality of it where everything about my life is a message that reflects christ and so the bible says in romans chapter 8 it says the earnest expectation of creation are waiting for not everybody you know we always jump around and say my generation is waiting you better find out whether your generation is waiting for you or you are the one who is waiting for a savior the bible says the earnest expectation of creation is waiting for what the manifestation of these sets of people these people who are not only born again but are full of the word men who know the word 
men who understand the word and men who have committed their lives to obey the principles of the word men who understand the place of intimacy with the holy spirit men who understand the laws of the anointing they understand how to bring the atmosphere of heaven into the lives of people at that point you become a blessing listen you cannot help anybody if you are like them you can't help the poor by being one you can't help the sick by being one you can't help the oppressed by being one it is only when you are out of a system that you can help those in that system you can't help a depressed person when you are depressed you can you have to come out that's why the bible says come out from the among them and be ye separate hallelujah and the lord desires for us to step into sonship the bible says that there is a bondage of corruption upon our generation and it says only the sons only these sets of people they may not be many a great man of god calls them the remnant they may not be many how be it they are the ones who have refused to bow to the gods of the land they are the ones who have refused to bow to the systems they are the ones who have refused to bow to the golden image and they have said lord i will stay I will stay in the secret place i will allow myself to be built sons even when men are calling you great man of god you thank them with one hand and with the other hand you open the door to your secret place and rush back and say lord i know i'm great but maybe not great enough yet huh. and you stay in the secret place and there is an incubation of the spirit and sometimes people look at you and wonder they say what are you still looking for what do you want to become? You want to be disappearing from one place to another? If it's a requirement to shake your generation, then it's relevant to stay until you have it. Listen, when you stay and you are prepared, I tell you the truth, when you step out, you will not be ashamed. I told God something. I said, Lord, never let me step out of a boundary you have not opened for me keep me draw my ears do anything you do to keep me there but when the door is open never let me stay push me till i go out the lord is making us here friends there is a making of sons this word if you are a believer this must become your active partner the bible is not i'm not just talking of uh, inspiring women or um, what's the name every day with Jesus or rhapsody of realities or whatever it is there is a place for those devotionals but I tell you the truth you need more than it Satan is doing more than devotional you must prepare because kingdoms there will be a clash of kingdoms and hear me friends Satan is not folding his arms look at the people in the world they are becoming more spiritual by the day they used to hide it before but now it's not hidden again businessmen are not hiding the issue of being spiritual again and god is sending you to the business world and all you think is read books about finance you better take this and let it be your friend instead of buying timberland buy a concordance it will teach you the principle to own one of the company if you want to listen friends the difference between successful people and failures is that successful people delay their gratification now and get the things that are buy the truth it didn't say rent it buy it a lot of us like i will buy the truth buy tapes buy books sit with the world for those of us who are students you finish your exam sit with the world sit with the word this book of the law shall not depart from out of thy mouth but thou shalt meditate during day and night that thou mayest be careful to observe all that is written therein he said then not before not during then shall thou make thy ways prosperous and thou shalt have good success stay with the word write a list of the areas where things are not working accept responsibility 
and say lord my faith is not working i'm tired of lying faith part of your study what again you can't pray for people to be filled with the holy spirit say i'm tired i need to know the principles write it and stay the trouble with many believers is that our spiritual growth is not constructive we are not growing constructively so when you say you have grown we ask okay try to honestly tell us what are the parameters to prove that you have grown you say now i, I was i was an usher now i'm the chief usher no it's not necessarily true it's not necessarily true there are certain realities in the spirit it's not pride there are some things that you shouldn't be struggling with at certain levels it's not pride that's the proof of growth imagine at this level of your life you're still trying to walk what do we call you you need a miracle imagine at this level of your life you are still trying to wear your clothes you don't know whether to put the, your shoe right or left are you following me how many of you have worn your shoe and say ah, ah I was able to really wear it well today no that's how it is in the spirit there are some things that should embarrass you back to the secret place you should get tired of some things and say lord i can't keep running from pillar to post at least if i'm not where i should be i shouldn't be where i was and you lock yourself and say i am let there be that transition there is a kind of dissatisfaction it's a holy one that draws a man to sonship. And you get back and sit with the word. And someone is a man of God, are you around? You tell him, no, I'm not around. There are many of us that cannot switch our phone. That's our spiritual limitation. You look, it looks as if your phone, it will pinch you. Anything God gives you that you cannot lay aside for where you are going is an idol. Before you got the phone, you were alive lock that phone and sit with the word of God get a rechargeable lantern or get whatever you get and play a tape and sit down sometimes you play that tape while he's, pray, while he's playing you are praying in the spirit and soaking in that glory come on it won't be too long it won't be too long something about your life must leak there's no secret about it there is no secret about it your faith is not working stay with the word of God listen to the messages that you can get on faith sit down see I'm teaching you how to be sons because I must apologize to you but I think we were talking some time ago with the pastors at home and we we men of God have not really done justice to God's people because we have not paid the price to teach them the principles what's the use if I come and stand here and I say, Stosin, stand up. This guy, stand up. And I just say, all right, everybody watch this. I just wave my hand. And somebody falls. How does that equip the people? Except you, like I did last week, trying to use it to demonstrate something. Are you following me? See, sons are not carried away by results. When sons watch someone walking, every time I watch men of God, I'm really not looking at the results. I'm finding out my spirit is scanning through what they are doing. What Lord did this guy touch in the spirit? Hallelujah. What law is he touching in the spirit? That's how sons think. Some of us say, well, God has not called me into ministry. God has told me what my own call is. I'll just be motivating people, counsel people. And so you feel there's no need. The trouble is, we have been made to think every time you give an unusual attention to the word ministry. No. No, sir. They are life to those who find them. And health to their flesh. My son, pay attention to my words. Incline your ears to my saying. Do not let them depart from your eyes. Keep them in the midst of your heart. He said they are life. This is life and death, my brother. It has nothing to do with ministry. We live in a world where until you are solidified by the word, Satan will eat you up and spit out your bones. I've chosen to stay with the word. I've chosen to... I say it without apology. 
at almost every time you come to my house you find us diligently studying students of the world what is carried away by ministry no students here are burden of ministry god didn't give me any burden god gave me a call people put yokes on themselves as a result of their negligence to abide by god's principles stay after me i go for the word it will make me a son when things are not happening see your finances are not working well why are you studying on relationship go and address an issue that is not working hallelujah sit down and address let me tell you something when an area begins to work in your spiritual life you are motivated to serve god better there's nothing as frustrating as every area not working in your life you just ask yourself oh, what what am i even doing if finances uh, if your finance is working and then the gift of the spirit is not working at least you are motivated one over two so you can press for the other one but where every area is a wilderness I'm trying to put something in your spirit this night that when you leave this place where somebody is distracting you from studying the word you know that is your enemy hallelujah some of you stay and when you want to study the word someone says ah we need to go and visit so 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 and so person and like ah it's been a while it's been a while sit with the word sit with the word that's the singular pathway to sonship Therefore, say after me, the pathway to sonship is to stay with the word, to know the word, to understand the word, and to obey the word. I have a guarantee for you. If you truly abide by these things I'm teaching you tonight, it will not be too long. I tell you the truth, your profiting will appear unto all in a way that will shock you. These are practical principles. Be a student of the word, I beg you. Day and night, sit with the word. Invest in books. Invest in materials. Some of the teachings that we have here, I think yesterday or so, in chapel, we're listening to the message last week. And I sat by there. I didn't say, I'm the one that preached it. I already knew. We sat quietly. And we're soaking into these things. That's why we give we give all the teachings from when koinonia started and and the ones we do in school is free very free all you need to do is just get it and sit with the word get other relevant teachings stay with the word if you're studying on faith concentrate on faith and get it be sure that you have gotten it then you can move to something else let your growth be constructive am i blessing you friends there are many of us that things are not moving you are just acting like things are working you know things are not working get tired stay in the presence you have prayed for over 200 people nobody has even recovered not even to get healed not even recovered don't just say well some people is like that god gives no begin to find out what is the spiritual principle that releases the anointing and then commit yourself to it this is what i know to be the pathway of sonship there are many things that we teach and they are equally important the place of your seed the place of service in the body and other things they are very important but the foundation the foundational pathway to sonship is to stay with the word of God. Know the word. Understand it. Understand it. To, to understand you need the illumination of the spirit. And then you also need to follow them who through faith and patience have obtained the promise. Hallelujah. How many of us truly want to step in the reality of sonship? How many of us are trusting God to step up in certain areas of our lives? There are some of us, our families, things are not working. Our families are in a mess. Who told you you cannot change it? You can. 
if you could not change it, God will not bring you here. He has brought you to let you know that you can do something about it. We are going to pray. So we'll round up. And our prayer tonight is very simple. Lord, I want to begin to see the reality of sonship work in my life. I want to see the reality of sonship. The reality. Please, you see, don't take for granted these things we are sharing. They may look basic, but they are powerful. It's the foundation, the word of God. The word of God. Go ahead and cry. Say, Lord, my life must make progress. The Holy Ghost is in my life to bring beauty and glory. Go ahead and pray. Please make sure you are praying. Tonight, God has committed something in our hands that will set us above. The pathway to sonship is the path that stays with the word of God. Stays with the word of God. Understands God's principles. Is a sacrifice to bring your mind and your body under the influence of the word. But when you do, happy at thou. Because heaven becomes a reality in your life. I don't care what the situation is in your life. This is the solution tonight. No matter how impossible it looks. I have not seen a man that has given true diligence to the word. The word of God will make you a son. The word of God will make you a son. The word of God will translate you from being a child to a son. Stay with the word. Brothers and sisters, stay with the word. It is life. 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 The principles of the world are the principles by which heaven are designed to function by. Go ahead and pray and say, Lord, grace. Grace. I receive grace to be an ardent student of the world. Don't let the devil deceive you. Make sure you are praying. Grace to be an ardent student of the world. Go for knowledge. Go for knowledge. Go for knowledge. It will place you above. Go for knowledge. Don't go for results. Go for knowledge. The knowledge, the understanding and obedience will give you every result. Go for knowledge, not just results. Go for knowledge. Invest in the word. Invest in the word. Invest in books. Invest in tapes. Don't just buy them. Use them. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The second prayer point very quickly is we're going to say, Lord, open me up to the understanding of your principles. There are many of us that we have knowledge, but what we lack is understanding. We know what to do, but we don't know how to do it. Lift up the voice and pray and say, Lord, understanding. Understanding of your principles over my finances, over my health, over my life, over my ministry, over my business, over my family. Make sure you are praying. Let's raise our voice tonight and pray. Understanding. Teach me how it is done. Not just what to do. Tell him, Lord, teach me what buttons I need to press in the spirit. What principles I need to keep. Teach me how it is done. Lord, we receive understanding. Let there be a baptism of understanding. A baptism of understanding. 
understanding 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 hey they are life to those who find them is a secret that will not fail i assure you it's a secret that will not fail when you find it you have found gold when you found find it you have found a treasure are we there isaiah chapter 2 the same prophecy was given to prophet micah but i like isaiah's rendition and the word of the lord let me start from verse 1 came to isaiah the son of amos what he saw concerning judah and jerusalem 2 says and it shall come to pass in the last days that the mountain of the lord's house shall be established in the top of the mountains and shall be exalted above the hills and nations shall flow unto it verse 3 says and many people say many people many people shall go and say come let us go up to the mountain of the lord to the house of the god of jacob and he will teach us of his ways and we will walk in his paths for out of zion shall go forth the law and the word of the lord from jerusalem hallelujah it is important for us as believers please you can drop your bible now and listen it is important as believers to understand that there is a territorial dimension to kingdom advance kingdom advance generally speaks of extending the influence the reign and the influence of the christ when prophet isaiah received the messianic prophecy that would talk about jesus it was said in that prophecy that of the increase of his government and his peace there will be no end that means of the continual advancement and expansion of christ his purposes and the peace that comes in that kingdom there will be no end so this is a kingdom that grows please understand this he says i will build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail i know that looking at society right now it looks like the church is not growing it looks like the purposes of christ is not advancing but i want you to know that the church is growing and the purposes of christ is advancing the bible declares that it is god's desire that the lordship of christ be established first in the hearts of men please say the hearts of men one more time say the hearts of men and then number two across territories so kingdom advance is twofold the establishment of the lordship of christ first in the hearts of men the purposes of christ must be established in the hearts of men then number two it must be it must be frontiered across territories that means it is not enough that individuals be saved it is not enough that individuals come under the governing influence of the christ it is time to start taking cities cities the bible says these are they the book of acts that have turned the world upside down the story of revival as we read first from scripture and then through modern history talks about men and women according to hebrews 11 the bible says they subdued kingdoms everybody says subdued kingdoms i'm teaching us this dimension because i was so touched dealing with the teachings that i had with um, cgc and then it, i was reminded again that it is not enough for us to just win souls in terms of individuals it is time for us to obtain grace from god to start taking cities he says ask of me of the hidden i will give them to you for your inheritance hallelujah praise the lord it is time for us to take systems structures nations and bring them under the lordship of the christ this is one of the ways that the kingdom will advance now look up i gave an analogy in the morning while teaching during the church service 
uh, of CGC. And I told them that you may not have seen the founders of Nokia or um, Blackberry or whatever it is, your Apple products, but they have so done something to the territory that if your phone gets missing, lost, or spoiled, you remain restless until another one comes. They have forced the necessity of that product in your life. You, no matter how conservative you are, when you lose your phone, you don't just keep quiet. You will say, glory be to God, but you will do something about it. They have, they have, they have indoctrinated a generation into believing that without a phone, a gadget like this, your life is incomplete. Now, that's powerful because that's exactly how the kingdom was supposed to become institutional. That a day must come in the life of a city when if there is no service in a day people will say what is wrong not just on sundays alone not just on mondays alone they gather daily in the early church that a day will come where it should not be that there is no christian within a territory it should not be that god is void of men and women who can advance his purposes within a territory kingdom advance is territorial that means that we are not entirely free until our territory is free i repeat we are not entirely free until our territory is free i can enjoy the freedom that comes with a new life as an individual but i am still in bondage because if the territory has not come under the lordship of the christ i can be affected listen to me i can be affected by the value system that is predominant within a territory even though i have been exempted by my new birth experience such is the case that we experience here in the north such is the case that we experience in africa i give you an instance i am not a corrupt person you are not a corrupt person but we are victims of the consequences of corruption for instance why because we are immersed in a territory that still holds corruption as a value system so we're not entirely free listen this message is aimed at correcting the mistake that esther was about to make hallelujah her man was conniving with the king and attempting to manipulate and influence him to bring the people of god under servitude and bondage to pass a law that will fight and annihilate the jews are we together esther is in the palace as the privileged wife of ahasuerus having the opportunity to influence the program of god she was comfortable i hope you know that as the first lady of a king who was lord over 127 provinces a province is what will be equivalent to a continent a province is not a local government a province is not it will be the equivalent of what we call a continent today and so literally he was like the lord of the then world 127 provinces and here's a woman with the power and the influence to see that the purposes of god are preserved but because of the beauty and the security that came with the palace she ignored mordecai and mordecai sent a warning and said do not think when they finish with us when they find out you are a jew in other words although you are free in the palace you are not free in the nation are we together now esther's advocacy the entire book of esther was not about esther trying to protect herself she was already free remember she was the king's wife the same way you are already free as the bride of christ but the territory is in trouble there is a mordecai somewhere manipulating the government and the in the the positions of influence to antagonize the program of god and the holy spirit stands as our mordecai and he's speaking to the esther of the king and saying do not be comfortable just because you can buy a car just because you can eat just because you are happy just because things are well with you just because your church looks like it's doing well if the kingdom the program of god the territory is not captured to come under the influence of christ it means one day what you call liberty 
will not be liberty indeed hallelujah praise the lord god is a god who is territorial in context he deals with people he deals with things territorially i have heard of stories where flourishing churches flourishing nations were locked down in a moment because another pharaoh arose who did not know joseph when i was studying preparing for this i studied and it surprised me to find out that north korea was once a center of revival on earth can you imagine that north korea that once upon a time there was an outpouring of the spirit china was once a place of massive revival the hand of god was strong upon that europe you study the story of people like john knox and the rest mighty men of and women of god john knox who took over scotland through the power of prayer and intercession and right now some of these places have become monuments to the palestine many of the apostolic activity of paul happened within rome palestine and all of those those nations and today you can hardly find anything that represents the purposes of god do you know why because the individuals were free but the territory was not free daniel was free as a person he had been exalted to be one of the king's inner circle but the program of god in babylon was still in bondage and all of a sudden Darius, I mean uh, Nebuchadnezzar, decides to build a 90 feet statue of gold and says, when you hear the trumpet, when you hear all of these things, bow down to it. Three Hebrew boys came out to stand and be different. They wanted to be different, but they had to pay the price for fighting the mindset of a territory. Listen, please hear me. You are not free when your territory does not call upon your God. The nation of Israel were in Egypt to receive succor because there was no bread, there was no wine, food had finished. But because Joseph was there in power and Pharaoh had committed the entire governance of Egypt unto him, the purposes of God could thrive. Listen carefully. The purposes of God could advance under the watch and under the leadership of Joseph. But Egypt did not yet belong to god in terms of territorial alliance so when the man who was the advocate of god's program died another pharaoh arose and when that pharaoh arose he changed his policy look how easy it is to bring the purposes of god to jeopardy one man can just arise who does not believe in your conviction and that's the end of it we are not free until our territory is free dominion must be territorial is god speaking to us commanding influence and dominion over a territory is a dimension of the gospel that has largely not been understood please look up let me have your attention we have done well in terms of evangelism please come one-on-one -on -one evangelism we have done well in terms of printing tracts excellent we have done well in terms of putting jesus film and going to you know community projects bible translation activities we have done exceptionally well that is commendable except for the fact that it seems as though our lopsided understanding of the gospel and kingdom advance if we do not correct and balance it there will be a serious problem do you know this is the problem today in the west an average elderly person in america is born again an average elderly person in america is born again calls upon the name of the lord jesus but an average young person in america is far he's not even close to the gate of the kingdom what happened once upon a time america did not just believe in jesus alone they dedicated their territory they said in god we trust as a, as a territorial 
that means god anywhere you see within the circumference of america it is dedicated as the space for your influence god is a god of territory what did he give to abraham not just the blessing he gave him access to territory god is always territorial he wants territories to be captured for him and this is a dimension of kingdom advance that people have gotten wrong please look up when we talk about um there is a concept that is used especially in the pentecostal circle it's called take over and it's a concept that came from the revelation of scripture that a time will come the mountain of the lord's house that a time will come the world will bring influence and, and i believe that but there is a dimension of our takeover concept that is wrong for many of us our concept of takeover means one day nigeria will be like dubai one day um haiti will be like europe um i don't think it's going to happen not at this side of god's program so the idea of takeover is not just in terms of infrastructural development no remember that territory is about people people the earth is the lord's and the fullness thereof the walls and they that dwell in them so uh, the idea is not an advocacy to make nigeria become like dubai one day it's a wonderful project if it ever happens are we together but the idea is to see that the ideology of a territory now this is where we're talking about so when we're talking about territorial dominion we're not looking at it from a carnal fleshly standpoint although there is a socio-economic implication but primarily we are talking of the church ascending to a point where the church is in charge of the mind control systems write it down the mind control systems across every territory this is how dominion happens when the mind control systems that means the instruments that are used to shape the paradigm the understanding and the perception of people within a territory comes under the influence of the church that is dominion everyone please say mind control systems one more time shout it say mind control systems so when we talk about territorial dominion the idea is not to drive muslims drive traditionalist from a territory in that the only people here are just christians that's not the idea because the same lord is rich unto all are we together now it was the mistake that alexander the way wanted to make because of his passion to see this territorial takeover the idea was to drive every non-christian out of a region and he tried to do it and he came up with a city called zion city right it was a city that would become a prototype of his idea that means a city that was entirely built upon righteousness where there was nothing that represented darkness there and i understand that but this is not exactly the concept until jesus comes there will still be sinners on earth until jesus comes there will still be non-christians on earth the same lord sends rain upon the godly and the ungodly are we blessed very powerful concept your christianity in terms of kingdom advance will be very meaningless if you don't understand this this is the reason behind the frustration of many christians who are now born again now filled with the holy spirit and then they tend to ask what more because the advocacy the proposition that was given to them at their new birth experience was that they should prepare for heaven and that is wonderful and now this guy realizes that he has 90 more years to live how many years so let's assume that this guy is 35 90 plus 35 this is a long time to live not knowing what you are doing are we together 
So many people are frustrated because the ritual of going to church on Sunday, then midweek prayer on Wednesday, then maybe a prayer meeting on Friday, then another fellowship, and then the ritual continues. Then once in a while, a conference comes. Then once in a while, a revival program comes. Then marriage is added to it. Then children added to it. Then old age is added to it. It finally ends up in the grave. It's not a wise way of living. An intelligent God would not design that system of living. There is enough to occupy you to make your life worthwhile that you check the time and say, my God, can you imagine 20 years is gone right now? I must walk the works of him that sent me while it is day. The Bible says the harvest is wide, but the laborers are few. Let me add, not to add to scripture, but I think the laborers are also foolish. They are not just few. There, there is need to trust God for an impartation. He says wisdom is profitable to direct. It's already an emergency that the laborers are few. And then if the laborers that are there are not wise, operating by the wisdom of heaven, then we'll be in trouble. If you do not love this message, you are selfish. Because it means you are not thinking about your children. May God forbid it that it will be in our lifetime. Pharaohs will arise from our territory that will hijack this place. That our children will be sent to servitude. Do you know, let me tell you, God forbid. But if a crisis breaks out in Africa, right? Or Nigeria. Most of our parents who are already close to their grave. It's just to push them and they're in. They're already close there. You, you get what I'm saying? Believers are very careless sets of people. We always think darkness is so far until our carelessness allows it to come near. To come near to a point that our children will no longer have the... Who would have believed that the Ten Commandments will be removed today in schools? Look up, please. Who will have believed? We are not talking of Saudi Arabia. We are not talking of North Korea. Are we together? We are not talking of the Gulf nations. We are talking of a nation that has stood to herald the gospel for decades. And right now, individuals within a parliament would sign and say, get this thing out. You discipline your child, you are going to court. That means you flog the child, behave well, be a good disciple of Jesus. Straight, someone is punishing you for violating the fundamental right of that child. Are we together? I know a great man, a very wealthy man whose son was in the U.S. When he clocked 18 and he came back, the mother shouted. He told her, stop that, I am 18. The mother beat nonsense out of him. <laughs> now, it's not an advocacy for violence and child abuse. Please, don't misunderstand me. I'm speaking to nations. There are people following us from around the world. But the idea is that most people think your personal salvation means territorial salvation. No. There is personal salvation. I am saved. But there is territorial salvation. I am safe. Pray for the peace of Jerusalem, not the peace of the prayer warrior. The prayer warrior is already free, but Jerusalem is in trouble. Pray for the peace of Jerusalem. He said, they shall prosper that love thee. Hallelujah. I thank God for the profound mentorship of Dr. Miles Munro in and to my life. We continue to be the fruits of his apostleship, advocating a balanced understanding of kingdom advance. The evangelical has done well. We respect and we honor and we continue to bless them. I came out of the evangelical circles, but the imbalance of advocating personal salvation alone as the ultimate key to taking over territories is an error. 
an individual salvation is important but we must understand the principles that bring christ to be enthroned territorially look at this i love the way the bible puts it as for me and my as for me and my why is it important for your house to serve the lord if they don't want to serve that's their cup of tea no as for me and my house one time when they were fighting jericho they were instructed to not take anything is that true that no substance should be taken specific instructions were given and one man decided to hide something for himself because of that an entire day a, a, a little city began to defeat them now imagine the innocent people that died because of one person's contribution her man single-handedly was going to destroy the entire nation of the jews we must command influence and dominion territorially to establish posterity our children are at the mercy of our spiritual understanding the continuity of god's program is at the mercy of our spiritual understanding do not say like esther i am happy i am comfortable i know that i'm going to heaven if you like kill me i'm going to heaven what of your children what of your grandchildren sometimes this selfish approach to martyrdom we think that just because you are ready to die for jesus i what of the rest are they ready if i'm ready to die for jesus and this guy is not ready the proof that i love jesus is that for his sake i should say lord give us time let this man be ready too most of us don't know that this our advocacy for martyrdom it looks spiritual is selfishness lord even if it's to kill let them kill i'm ready now no no we are not ready we are not ready there are souls that should be saved there are territories that must come under the influence of christ paul said for me to live is christ and even if i die is gay but they killed him and he came back correct they killed Paul when they left. He got up, shook himself, and said, "You are joking." There is still, there are still many other places. If I die today, it is gain for me, not for God's program. If I die today, it is gain for me as an individual. But God's program on earth will suffer a heavy blow. So what do I do as proof that I love him? Reject and cast the spirit of death. Anywhere I see it, not out of fear, but out of my desire to see that I'm alive and strong to continue advocating the frontiers of the kingdom. If you love God, don't die. Don't die soon. Live long. Remain alive. You think I'm just motivating you. Tonight's message, we're just warming up. I have some serious things to talk about here. Let me tell you this. Brothers and sisters, hear me. Africa is coming under siege. Nigeria is coming under siege. There are powers that have intelligently been coordinating a campaign to frustrate the purposes of the Christ. And because believers do not understand the territorial dimension of kingdom advance, we continue to flatter ourselves in the palace like Esther, whereas Haman is already plotting the defeat of God's people. But thank God for Esther's. Thank God for Esther's. Doesn't mean you're a lady. Esther is a prophetic office. Thank God for Esther's. The saviors that shall arise from Zion are we together there are principles I want to share with you now the remnant that will preserve the purposes of the Christ and make that preservation transgenerational take note of the word transgenerational by the grace of God if Christ tarries I want to be able to stand from the shores of heaven and see that God's program still continues because we supplied a template that could not be bent. Hmm. 
we mentor believers in a way and manner that even though we have gone they still continue to stand to see that the purposes of christ is advanced let me tell you this the jews and those in israel were very wise although many of them have not personally come into the knowledge of christ but they have used the principles of judaism to understand that it is not enough to be connected to the god of abraham isaac and jacob our territory must also come and so when the neighboring nations fight territory they say no believers have this foolish understanding that because the purposes of christ is only in our hearts what do you need land for what do you need this for are we together now yes there are cities that when you enter you can almost not find land for church do you know why because the territorial dimension of kingdom advance was not taught the leaders in those days when they were free lands to get they thought that evangelism is all about once jesus is in your heart no worry how how long do you have to live and the platforms right now believers are stranded to have a place of worship is a problem because it's a campaign that was taken with intelligence over decades and the leaders as well-meaning as they were they were not strategic enough in understanding the territorial dimension of kingdom advance but in the name of jesus under our watch and in our lifetime not only individuals will lift up the name of the lord we will compel territories we will hijack the mind control systems the strata that manipulates the understanding of men this is what we are living for and it will happen we are not noisemakers there is a power and a force that backs us we do not speak cunningly devised fables we have been given the blueprint of god's program and we are following accordingly usually we will look like talkatives until you see it come to pass and it shall come to pass in the last days that the mountain of the lord's house you know every time i read that scripture i know that god was not talking to somebody and asking me to share that idea he was writing it and saying apostle joshua selman see it this is your mandate i've taught you here that you must find where it was written about you in scripture not prophetically directly not everything written in scripture was for the saints alive many of them were written waiting for the real owner of that prophecy i found things in this bible i believe they were written for me it's true hallelujah i would share with us four principles tonight if you love jesus christ and you desire to see a generation after a generation if you desire to see nigeria the north kaduna state africa and indeed the globe stand and honor the name of the lord then pay attention to the things i want to teach you number one the first principle allocated by god's wisdom for territorial takeover thank you is the warfare dimension of prayer and intercession the first principle given to the saints by which we compel territories to come under the influence of the christ is the priestly ministry of prayer and intercession take it high for me mike listen believers please look at me prayer is not for prayer warriors prayer is for saviors there is no such thing as i don't pray because i'm not a prayer warrior and when i talk of prayer remember that i've weaned us away from this baby channel uh, uh, canal milk like prayer of give me tea give me bread he said ask me for the nations we're talking of prayer john knox prayed a prayer and said lord give me scotland not give me an estate give me a territory or take my life that you can carry one city and cut a map and put it in your prayer altar and that becomes your prayer lord to see your glory and gulf zaria no way for darkness a new spirit is about to be introduced in the territory and angels clear them out of the way because the saints are alive
The Bible says hell had enlarged itself. There are spirits that have not yet come to Africa, but will come. I hope you know that all we see is not all there is. There are inventions of mysterious sicknesses that the devil wants to send. But there must be men and women who are true watchmen. Not just watchmen as talk. I will stand upon my watch and I will set myself upon the tower. Men who can pray darkness away. Men who can pray light into being. Men who can pray until a savior arises. Anna the prophetess. There's no record of scripture that she was praying for a husband. I hope you know she was a widow. She had a legitimate ground to say, Oh Lord, while I'm visiting you now, sort my life. She said, leave the issue of my life now. I continue to pray until my eyes see the consolation of Israel. When Jesus was brought to the temple, she said, Now, my, my soul rest. I, I'm ready to go. I finally seen him. Hi. May God raise those kinds of Christians in our days. People who are concerned about the program of God more than the personal interests of tea and bread. Don't get me wrong. These things are important. But your heart. When you study the world's revival, Evan Roberts. Evan Roberts was 26 years old when God used him to shut down the city of Wales. 26 many of you here are older than him when this revival happened the young man began to pray and say lord i am tired of seeing this kind of christianity i see within my territory powerless christianity and he began to pray and for a period of six months he was going to heaven every day every day from between the hours of 12 and 4 he would have a divine visitation it was the product of that visitation they got a little school for him to just start a little program and that was where the fire started people will read about what happened in wales in the newspaper and right there that fire will engulf them smith wigglesworth prophesied that it will happen again yes he told lester sumro that it will happen again he said before you die make sure you don't die with this anointing find young men transfer this mantle upon them so that we, listen this thing we are carrying did not just start with us it's a relay i don't know how old what is on me is all i know is that i received it it's like an olympic touch it's easy for us to sit down and criticize our fathers criticize the founders of different movement they brought error they brought this and run our mouths and talk nonsense and not know that now the stage is ours do you not see the eyes of eli becoming dim do you not see that the time is almost finished and god is calling on samuel samuel you are sleeping wake up eli is about to go it's a call for a generation i speak what i speak in parables but it is true the eyes of eli is closing and if Samuel does not wake up and become that prophet whose word does not fall to the ground. We raise your banner high. We shine your light so bright. We sing in honor of you. We will raise your banner high. We shine your light so bright. We sing in honor of you. Nadoka Kasunanka Ubangi Jika Isayabo Nakima Masunanka Ubangi Jika Ninadoka Kasunanka it's an anthem for a generation. We raise your banner high. We shine your light so bright. We speak. We will raise your banner high. We 
Sit down. There used to be a song that we sang in a seminary that our generation will call your name. This is not a sermon for tea and bread. This is not a sermon for give me this. God will do it. But we're talking of nations. The ministry of warfare and intercession that an anointing must come upon a generation to pray not for the purpose of showing who is more powerful there has to be a grace it's a corporate mantle it's not just prayer groups it's starting now as little prayer groups little a time will come there will be no leader it's a grace homes will become prayer altars schools will become pray it does not matter who wants to say what it is an ordinance signed by god's integrity let me tell you this if we cannot pray as a generation we're in trouble darkness will stamp us and stamp our children oh haman do not rejoice esther is still in the palace esther is still in the palace and she still has access to hazaros that which has been signed can be changed. Listen to me. The days that are coming are days when we have to trust God to sort our personal needs fast so that it can give us room to focus all this issue of coming to preach series just about tea and bread we are talking of nations our children are in trouble pela sibra haskada barako teshile hasia jele sabarusi hasa na bahashila katus pela barutas kabarinda gadishia hasa rata baraka to jele kete baria Skataba, Shada Sidas, Ebrezi Gete Lesia Hasabandaka, Raparuto Supra Catiana, Rata Cinemas, Kele Barutasia, men carrying things that belong to a generation, not a program, not a conference, carrying mantles that are generational. Hebradu Shele Barutasia. Jeremiah chapter 1 and verse 10. Verse 10. See, 
I have this day set you over territories, nations, and over kingdoms to root out, to pull down, to destroy, to throw down, to build. God is giving nations like a man is about to die and he say you my estate in Kano is yours God is sharing nations and saying I, I allocate territories who can sing for me that song will bow down and say you are God you know the song sit down let's sit down we have to make progress tonight hmm. listen to me there are spiritual forces and controlling powers in every allocated territory every territory that is allocated has spiritual powers listen to me these spirits influence culture these spirits create negative patterns in the minds of people they are called familiar spirits there is a reason why they are called familiar spirits they are spirits that have dwelt with people they grew up with people i shared this morning during the church service that one time i remember i was in shiroro we were ministering in a crusade and i saw a group it was up to 15 or 16 people women it was a pattern i saw there the moment the women gave birth they became deaf and dumb immediately i said what is this it was no longer a sickness listen when you see a widespread of a pattern it's a testimony that a controlling power is reigning within a territory every territory in nigeria has the signature of the controlling powers there are territories where no matter how great the men study is the women that feed the men territories there are territories that are associated with certain things anger rage there are territories that are associated with early death you go to the territories and the youngest person is 60 years old but there are no children the parents use the children to live long controlling powers there are territories where you must end like your past you don't end like your future you can go to the u.s and spend 10 years and return back to the village in one room it's not about habits there are spirits there are many of us who have uncles who will tell you this one was a ceo this one was a customs officer but right now if you give him ten thousand he will say thank you what happened these powers there are churches there are territories where a church cannot survive five years impossible something must happen the man will die a scandal will tear him down something must happen there are powers when daniel began to pray the prayer was affecting the spirit 
of the Medes and the Persians. The spirits that controlled Medo-Persia. His prayer, Daniel was not saying, Lord, sort me out. Uh -uh. He found out that the time of the captivity of Israel in Babylon had come to pass. And he started praying. I, Daniel, understood by books. I read and I saw that by this time in prophecy, we should not be in captivity. How shall we sing the Lord's song in a strange land? And he began to pray. And when he began to pray, heaven, don't mind the people talking nonsense that they don't know. This is not about New Testament and Old Testament. It's what happens in the realm of the spirit. The moment they began to pray, Gabriel, the angel that brings messages, the angel of service, that archangel left the third heavens and on his way coming to the earth, he was hijacked from the second heavens by one who the Bible calls the prince of Persia, not the demon of Persia. There is ranking in the spirit, a prince, not a traditional ruler, a prince. Let me tell you this. The foolishness of many believers alongside our pride is why Satan will tear nations down. All these childish teachings that continue to move around, that negates the reality of the realm of the spirit and the fact that there needs to be the contention of the saints will destroy our generation. Some of those teachings are deceptions activities of lying spirits the bible says the spirit speaketh expressly that in the latter times some shall depart from the faith and they will give heed to seducing spirits and the doctrine of demons we are watching darkness before us and we are pretending it is not there we are watching a woman barren her daughter barren granddaughter barren we say nothing is happening how can you say nothing is happening A grandmother raped by someone the mother raped by someone the granddaughter raped by someone you say nothing is happening find a way to believe it early in your life that there are controlling powers they don't attack you they are not interested in you they attack territories there are spirits that attack you there are spirits who don't even know who you are they were allocated to a territory when jesus was about to cast the spirit they begged him not to leave the territory we can leave the man but keep us in the territory <laughs> hallelujah please listen to what i teach you this is the redemption of our children is the preservation of God's program within our land. There is a spirit now that attacks age ranges from 10 to 18. Once you are more than 18, it does not disturb you. It's like Satan has plotted his graph and found out that the most useful age range now are our teenagers. He's not disturbing babies. He's not disturbing the young people. The old people already, they're already there. But those teenagers... I know this by the widespread pattern in our teenagers. Their resentment for God, their obsession for technology, their outspoken, that the vocal defiance that they have is the spirit of rebellion. And we are watching, saying nothing is happening. One day my child will grow and a child of 12 shouting at his mother and while he's doing it from every territory, they are doing it. There is a spirit making it happen. Do you believe what I'm sharing? There are some of us, we cannot talk to our younger brothers or sisters now. We are 10 years older than them, but you dare not open your mouth to talk to them. You just think they are being stubborn. No! It's a spirit. The spirit of defiance. The spirit of rebellion. When those age ranges become our governors and our senators, that's when you will see the full assault of darkness ah but not when we are alive
God has men. Elisha said, tell no man to come and let him know there is a prophet in Israel, not there is a God in Israel. Hallelujah. You do a program now and you want to put it on mainstream TV. If there is the name Jesus, there is the name Holy Spirit, there is the name eternal life, it falls under the same category as some of those words that we they don't allow to be pronounced including God Jesus ah. you tell a preacher to preach and there's no name Jesus there's no salvation there's no God there's no redemption what is he preaching The most destructive manifestation of demons is their ability to manipulate the thinking of men. It's not their ability to inflict sickness. No. That's cheap. It's not their ability to bring death. That's cheap. But to keep a man alive and to hijack them whom the God of this world, who blinded their mind? The God of this world. There are gods that station within territories. There are territories where you don't find old men. The oldest man is 43. Because anybody that crosses it dies. I've seen territories like that. There are territories where all their men are dead. The territory is full of women. Because all the men die. Some of you know what I'm talking about. It was only the male figures in your family. The devil took their lives away. And left the women. Was it not the firstborn male that was killed when Moses was born? Not women. Was it not the firstborn male, two years and above, that was killed when Jesus was born? Imagine all those women. It's a principle. So mothers are becoming both mothers and fathers because controlling powers are there. And while that is happening, we are laughing. You know, I've told you about a saying in my village that when you see your neighbor's beard, on fire get water and soak your own don't laugh the same fire is coming to you we must pray oh we must pray there are spirits we must pray when i came i was asking it me about the testimony of the dear lady one a precious lady that i came i met I saw you people so excited and I wanted to know what was going on. And when he told me the story, I said, you see it now? And someone would tell that lady that the only attack she has is the one in her mind. Are you joking? Are you joking? I've seen demons so. This is not something I'm just talking. I've seen them. The first time I saw a real physical demon, it was then in the campus. I was at going to the back of a generator there used to be a generator there and as soon as i turned i saw a real spirit and he said get back that's what he told me i'm not talking nonsense that was you read in a storybook they are not cunningly devised fables i've seen these spirits they are real i know what they do on earth i know what they do in families there are controlling powers that destroy marriages if you do not stand your ground i love you i love you is nonsense just keep going one day you will wake up and see the same woman you love that was there for you and this spirit will land on your head like a mantle and you see what happens to you what of men who kill their children have you not seen a trend recently now a trend of rape rape huh that all these guys just come and just rape ladies do you think those guys are just driven by desire are they not prostitutes no it's more than desire it's a spirit there is something it seeks to do sodomy is a spirit you know that right there is something it does and pleasure is not one of it spiritual intelligence we need to stay and ask god to teach us wisdom let us know his ways hallelujah 
I know territories where when you rise up, if you dare open your mouth and say, everybody come and celebrate with me, see what the Lord has done. From that day, you must go down. Joseph told his brothers, I had a dream. It's not my fault. I went to bed and I had a dream. The sun, the moon, 11 stars. And the brother said, that's all right. They were the ones who were going to kill him. Listen, we must learn to pray these spirits out of the way. We must learn to pray these distractions. You see the things that are happening in Zaria now? Some of the developments, the roads, don't you think it's technology that is bringing it? It's a signature of the prayer of the saints. Shut down the prayer of the saints in this city. Then you will know what Satan has always wanted to do. I believe in the ministry of prayer. It is not the issue of being a Pentecostal. The days are coming when it will no longer be an issue of devotion in the morning or praying for a sermon. You are praying to secure your children. Listen, let me tell you, this day and age, listen, do you know if your child leaves home to go to school, you should pray. What happens to that child from the door of your house to school? That child is under the tutelage of someone you do not even know. By evening, he will come back and ask you and ask you questions that you cannot sleep. Daddy, what is this? And you say, who taught you? Say, my teacher taught me. Your teacher? Yes, sir. Controlling powers. Koinonia is not thriving just because Satan does not know we are here. Is striving because of the invincibility of prayer fire. I said it in the morning that there are departments in this ministry I supervise by myself. And there is a reason why. Because of the strategic role that they play. Now every department plays that strategic role. But because of the spiritual component, the prayer department, the worship team, you always see me on their case with the leaders. There is a reason why. Because let me tell you the truth. When these instruments just become music, we're in trouble. When this singing just becomes entertainment, we're in trouble. When the prayer department just becomes a place of fellowship, we're in trouble. And the fire upon the altar that it shall burn day and night. Most churches have partners, financial partners, and that's all right most churches have protocol members that protect the man of god most churches have priority you know activities but the things that keep the fire are not there prayer zero worship zero let me tell you something brothers especially honestly if you are a man in this generation and this time and your priesthood ministry is not at work you are about to destroy your wife and children there is no such thing as pray for me again you pray your way and pray the climate open ah my wife and my child mother mary as you go to church pray for me that thing must end it is my prayer that the homes in koinonia don't become like shrines that they become real homes the proof of masculinity is not the huskiness of your voice is the is the dexterity of your priesthood i've advised us ladies watch out for these things in saying yes don't just say yes carelessly and say time is going the urgency on ground requires men and women who know how to burn the incense Please sit down. There are spiritual forces that shape the minds of people. A lady sent me a text recently. She just graduated. As soon as she graduated, she said she's been feeling like tearing her clothes and running on the street. Now, do you think an intelligent person will behave like that? It's a spirit. 
how many graduates have you seen that the moment they finish on their way going home a little kekena pep just turn and left them there till a truck came and climbed them how many people have you seen final exam final paper they just find something on the ground and say that's it you are gone there is no such thing that is just is no coincidence is the manipulation of spirits you have an assignment to sanitize your atmosphere let them know you are alive start with your atmosphere sometimes i walk around my house in the night especially when i'm around i'm just walking around my house do you know not too far from my house there is a graveyard i've not seen one ghost one one ghost where will it enter and come to my house I'm dealing with matters of destiny not, not a ghost coming from somewhere what business has the dead the living to do with the dead i even wanted to buy the place they told me that there are, there are graves there ha, apostle don't buy why you are dead you are dead one time archbishop benson idahosa came and met that they killed a fowl i think it was an incantation and he saw it and he gave it that they should go and help him and cook it <laughs> they had already caught it say why waste why waste meat like this in the name of nonsense sacrifice god does not love wasted he said gather the crumbs that there be no wastage see let me tell you this if you do not know the power of prayer you will fear demons to death hallelujah we sit down and allow spirits to roam around our houses i know a man true story in just years ago he was slapped by i don't know if he's a ghost or a spirit he he works then in the teaching hospital and he said he used to hear that means the um what they call that place doctor where they keep mortuary in the night while doing his work true story he will hear like discussions you know like people have woken up and they are talking true story and one time he attempted he shouted according to him he said shut up and he i don't know whether he he wanted to open the door or something i stand before the god of heaven and i lie not and the 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 spirit slapped him until that man died he did not recover spirits are real don't wait till you see them they are real my mother once told me a story they went to bury someone this thing did not I'm, I'm not sure it's more than six seven years they went to bury someone and physically as they were dropping the coffin fire physically fire came out and killed some people not parables not vision fire came out and killed some people have you seen people that they buried and you found a man back in your house all these things will remain when there is no prayer just saying i am the righteousness of god in christ hallelujah that's not the way it works we are legislators we enforce things we don't just wish things this wishing mentality will cost the church a lot no it's impossible who am i that the devil will not come jesus went to fast satan went to join him he was fasting satan was fasting too he was waiting there for 40 days for jesus who do you think you are that you will not come around your vicinity from whence comest thou jesus asked satan he said from voyaging to and fro there was not a place that he did not go to have you considered my servant job yes i came to his house it's only that he built a fortification and i could not access hallelujah right now people are afraid seven o'clock people have to lock up their, their shops in many areas they are losing in business why because some tout somewhere will come and waylay them and loot and steal money and the church is just quiet don't be like esther but be like esther parakatusiata 
you sense anything around your vicinity you don't wait to understand what it is tap your wife and say wake up when you do that twice three times one month the devil will know where to pass see let me tell you this whatever you allow to happen to your life don't blame god whatever you allow to happen to your family don't blame god i'm i'm waking us up that territorial dominion truly happens on the strength of priesthood not a need driven prayer hallelujah i heard of a man recently for one four years I, I'm, I'm i'm trying to be sure so that i don't exaggerate anything four years the wife refused to get pregnant the man was tired one day he came back from fellowship the wife was sleeping he came and knelt down and put his hand on top of her, her, her stomach and prayed that woman into pregnancy no i mean it if i'm joking i'll tell you i'm joking he was tired of this thing and said no he knelt down you just sleep you are my wife i'm the one who paid your dowry let me face this spirit of barrenness see there are times in your life you need to get agitated spiritually and stop allowing nonsense to just happen within your territory within your family hallelujah i was so encouraged when i heard it literally prayed not like impartation or yet no he sat down knelt down on top of his wife's stomach and prayed in tongues until that report changed you can pray some things out of your life and you can pray some things into your life there are times that you can put your job your 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 certificate on the ground and lock yourself from 12 to 6 you pray until where you did not apply called you our generation has not understood the power of prayer those who know how to pray are people who do not take no for an answer mm -mm. Mm -mm. they don't negotiate they decide and agree god are you in this if god says yes declare anything that stands the way hallelujah praise the lord a prayerless christian is a powerless christian a prayerless territory is a powerless territory a prayerless couple is a powerless couple a prayerless business is a powerless business a prayerless ministry is a powerless ministry Please sit down boy our time is gone the first key to territorial dominion is priesthood koinonia pray don't just pray on tuesday pray pray you go back this night trust god for grace even if it's 15 minutes walk around your room a little before you lie down apostle you don't know how busy i am that is the excuse that is the door that the devil will use to enter your life if you search for excuses you will always find one let me tell you this i have taught you and i pray you will believe it master the power of night prayers master the power of night prayers a generation that sleeps all through the night into the morning is a generation that will not be powerful i'm telling you this see there is a time when you will enter your sabbath in experience a young man personally now it's not i'm not saying this is the bible it's my personal understanding that a young man who actually goes to bed by nine to wake up by six and you don't have time for your destiny you are building rubbles the night is when men who are men pray the night is when men who are priests pray. The night is when men who are watchmen pray. The night is when gatekeepers of destiny pray. 
let me tell you sincerely i have not slept in days like real sleep to take out time and sleep it's a sacrifice You are supposed to get a job that God will use to change your family and your territory. And while you are sleeping, they send a letter from a parastator. We need these 41 names in the list. And there are spirits waiting there to decide what name will be removed. And every other person is in a Habali shrine, forcing his name to remain there. And you are snoring away. Your, your sleep is the marker that will clean your name out of that list you can stay and insist I may not have access to the office but I can pray I can pray I've seen the ministry of angels in my life I know that angels are real I know that they are real when you pray there are times I've tried to look for things and I could not find them and I prayed and slept and in my dream I got up and went to where it was and I woke up and went there physically and carried it many of us do not understand the ministry of angels because we do not pray in the name of Jesus every prayerlessness and spiritual laziness upon your life I curse it now this night in the name of jesus all the movies internet browsing that distract you i'm not saying they are wrong but if it can sit down and distract your prayer life i separate you from it now it was in the night that jacob wrestled with god and got power it was in the night that God came to Solomon and he received something. Men receive things in the night. Don't waste your night. Charge your atmosphere. Sleep under a heavy atmosphere of worship. While you are sleeping, you are receiving. You wake up in the middle of the night and you know an impartation is ongoing. See, let me tell you, these are not things where these are things we have practiced for years strong worship in that atmosphere while you sleep and you will keep having all kinds of dreams sometimes the dreams will show you the root cause of things sometimes you are hearing a message and in the dream you will start acting the message you are alive to the message Hi. Oh Lord, help our generation. Help our generation. Help our generation in the name of Jesus Christ. Hear me? If you are a minister of the gospel in this place, that means you are in ministry or you are trusting God to be in ministry. Please wake up. I deliver you from laziness. Hear me? Ministry is not about suits and agbada and protocol ministry is serious business you know all this and i say this respectfully to our younger generation most of these boys do not understand the gravity of attack that can come to your life when you are in ministry they are just happy and just loiter around in pride one attack will kneel you down you need to be powerful with god are we blessed Number two, goodness. The second principle of territorial dominion is the power of faith. Hebrews 11, 33. The power of faith. You cannot take over a territory when you doubt God. You cannot take over a territory when you do not believe God Hebrews 11 please read everyone one two read who through faith uh -huh, subdued kingdoms wrought righteousness obtained promises 
stopped the mouth of lions listen the bible says this is the victory that overcometh the world even our faith what is faith your conviction your depth of persuasion on who god is and the integrity of his person that convinces you enough to believe god and take action you will need the audacity that faith brings to reign in life life is not for weak people life is not for risk averse people life is for men and women who are courageous enough to storm the gates of destiny ah, the bible says that listen he said that lot and co were hijacked and captured and abraham said what did i hear you carried my cousin gather all the war men and let us go ah, courage courage faith the righteous are as bold as a lion that lion dimension is not supposed to help you harass people the lion dimension is so that you will be able to stand in the face of situations and say you can bring your best shot satan i will still be standing it takes faith to build a church it takes faith to start tv ministry that will bless people it does not take money it takes faith first it takes faith to raise your children we are a generation that is obsessed with guarantee give me a guarantee that you will be there for me there is no guarantee anywhere in destiny please hear me everybody say faith when god called me to ministry i called my father and my mother and i knelt down before them and i told them god has called me all my life i'm going to be busy serving the purposes of the kingdom my parents said god bless you we bid you godspeed go well that's it i'm not doing well because the church i was serving before did not give me money no sir listen let me tell you this faith creates everything out of nothing did you hear what i said your house now is in your faith the money you need is in your faith please learn the laws of faith faith is predicated upon a revelation that god is able the ability of god and his integrity everything looks impossible till faith brings it god will never tell you what you can do you know you have had god when what he says is bigger than you when god told me of the things that you'll be doing with this ministry around the world when god showed me and told me the things that you the power of faith but i know whom i have believed and i am persuaded lift your voice and pray everyone please pray pray where you are pray from the depth of your heart Please pray from the depth of your heart. Keep a rush, sell a barunda, sada bradegede balada ba. 
pray everyone you are praying in the spirit Second, <laughs> It's a sacrifice you are making for your destiny. It's a sacrifice you are making for his kingdom. Shikaruta Salabara. Two more minutes, pray in the spirit. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Listen to me. Forget about the temporary inconvenience that you are going through you are building something for a generation you are building something that will last rain will come and go but what comes upon you comes and stays are we together now praise the lord let's continue the power of faith now faith is the bible says the substance 
of things hoped for and the evidence the tangibility of things not seen hear me everyone you want to take over territories you will need to believe in god not believe in an uncle not believe in an auntie not believe in an asset not believe in an investment you need to believe in god god is able i may not know how but i know that he will build for himself what will bring him glory many christians and especially our generation we don't command results because we truly do not walk our faith we doubt everything and we do not take god at his word i've given you a little story years ago when i used to bank those days with first bank way before many of these facilities started coming that we now use to make banking easier then i would not have money at all in the bank my faith was that rugged i'm not saying do it i remember those days i would pray and trust god for miracle alert and i would stand up and start trekking to first bank i would queue for hours believing because i read in my bible what things soever ye desire when you pray believest that thou receivest it i took it literally many times i didn't find anything unfortunately but i didn't realize that what i was gaining was more than the money i was gaining the flexibility of my faith the the ability to believe god at his word let me tell you this when you are working with god you need to believe god there are times god will tell you wake up and go outside you will go outside and nothing will happen he will just say go back and your going out was profitless but your faith is being developed the idea is not for you to go and see or receive something the idea is an exercise of your faith so that tomorrow when he says take this nation you say lord i'm able we are well able unbelief is dangerous my only limitation in my life is the voice of god and time my only limitation in life is the voice of god and time time that honors the law of process if god tells me to walk through this crowd to that door i will not even see that rain is falling i'm on my way going whatever stands my way the faith that god gives do you not know that faith is a shield you can use faith as a shield. He said, wherein you will quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. You are not the first to be persecuted. You are not the first to be challenged by evil spirits. It will take your faith to command victory. We are a generation that loves impartation. And impartation is important. But let me tell you something. There are dimensions of destiny work that impartation will not bring it's a well you have to dig by believing god if i perish i perish when god spoke about koinonia i believed him enough to take action when god spoke about the messages being heralded by his angel and taking it around the earth i believed him Today we've seen all kinds of miracles over our teachings. You've heard some of them. That someone will buy a brand new flash drive from the place where he bought it and take it home, brand new, out of the cave, slot it in, and there are koinonia messages all. How do you explain that? That's what happened when faith. Listen, you will never see the glory of God until you believe. You will never see the glory of God until you believe. We are a generation that is obsessed with guarantee before we move. Your only guarantee is the word of God. The word of God. Everything God told me about ministry, about destiny, I believed him. I still do. I still do from the days 
when we could not afford bonds and could not afford a proper meal i believe that was a career of the blessing from the day when i could not pray for one person to be healed of headache i believe that his anointing was upon my life and i believe that he was going to use me we are going to pray one prayer i'm going to change my style of teaching now since there is rain i'm so happy for the rain because it will take away unnecessary formality and keep you to listen so now you are going to pray help my unbelief lord whatever it is that is killing my faith and not allowing me to trust you help my unbelief i claim that i trust you but it's really my uncle that i trust i claim i trust you but it's really my certificates that i trust i claim i trust you but it's really my skill my gift trust in the lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding I trust you. I trust you. I trust you. You are praying it for your destiny. You are praying it so that you can command dominion. Lord, I trust you. The grace to believe you. Believe you for my finances. Believe you to open doors. God is not a man that he should lie. God is not the son of man that he should repent. If he speaks, he is able to bring his word to pass. Please pray, pray. Koinonia, pray. He reigns, he reigns, he is standing by my side to bring his word to pass. He reigns, he reigns, my God is an awesome God. hallelujah listen hear me you need to shake off unbelief from your life today and say lord i believe you i may let everyone call me stupid but i believe you let everyone mock me and laugh at me but i believe you i believe you your word is true and i believe you when you say i am great i believe you when you say I am the head, I believe you. When you say I am not the tail, I believe you. When you say Gentiles shall come to my light, I believe you. When you say their kings will come to the brightness of my rising, I believe you. Listen, there are some of you in this place. God has told you you will stand before nations. 
but as it is you look so weak and you will not believe it you don't know the village i come from i cannot even speak english well that's not what god is saying believe me and let me take you there by myself Years ago, when God told me he was giving me access to kings and people in government, I believed him. Our very first crusade, I demanded to see and let us share fellowship with the king of the land. We didn't have the opportunity to do it the first time. Every one of our crusades that we had gone, I demanded an audience with the kings because God told me he would give me access to kings. I believe God. It's none of your business who my father is. It's none of your business who my mother is. That's not what God said. That's not the condition for his word. I believe him. The same way some of you are here. And God, you go to bed and you see yourself carrying the baton of generals. You wake up in the morning and say, it's a lie. It's not for people like us. We are the any house. Stop that, that ungodly talk and say, Lord, with all humility, I believe. Let it come. I believe you. It was in Port Harcourt. I was tending to a sick, one of our sick aunties where I was staying in 2007. I was in Port Harcourt and she was on her sick bed. She eventually died. And I was taking care of her in the teaching hospital there. And I was there. We were running shifts. And then from the, I don't know which of the floors now. I just looked at um, the window. And all of a sudden, I was caught up in a vision. And in that vision, I saw the international headquarters of this ministry. I saw 37 flags. And I saw white men. I saw nations coming. I said, what is this? And God said, that's where you are going. I believed him. I said, let's go, oh God. Let's go. I believe you. God told me I will never beg one king and beg any man for audience. I believed him. I believed him. I believed him. Do, can you believe God? One day I remember growing up, I told my mother, I said, do not worry about the things that are happening. One day, you will eat and never have to beg for bread again. And it will be in your lifetime. I said it. See, the righteousness of faith speaks. It does not assume. You make statements that sometimes you are afraid. My wife, right now we may be soaking gari. But in the name of Jesus, we will give to nations. And when you say the devil will speak to your ears and say, foolish man, respect yourself. My faith, it reaches out to you. I believe your word for me today. My faith reaches out to you i believe i believe your word for me, your word for me today. listen one day i was praying and the lord spoke to me and said son i will give you a gold mine i believed it literally i know it may have a prophetic meaning but I believed it literally until three years ago when three kings came together to give me 18.5 hectares of a gold mine. God said it and I believed it. See, listen, let me tell you this. This ego and the feeling of saying, let them not say I believed God and it was a lie. If you don't throw that thing away to stand and trust God. So what if you find out it's not God that said it? You readjust and move. This ego is why many people will not grow. God said it but I'm ashamed. I'm afraid. Let them not laugh at me. 
I remember when God gave me an instruction to empty my entire finance. It was a stupid thing. It was suicidal. But I did it. And God told me I would never beg for bread in my life again. I remember it was in this ministry. God gave an instruction to empty the account of the ministry. Literally 0.00. .00 and I believed him. Stupidly believed him. One week after that. God brought a harvest that till tomorrow we will not recover from. But I know whom I believed. If God says I will give you a house, believe him. If God says you will feed nations, believe him. If God says you will pay the school fees of a generation, believe him. Don't believe your ATM. Let God be true and every man a liar. Please hear what I'm telling you today. This life and this destiny, I stand before the God of heaven. And may I be forgiven if it's a show of arrogance. But there are many things. One of the things that God does with me is he mandates me to declare what he said before it happens. There are many things that I've said. Today, Prof said something here that really touched me. Um, in the morning and he said that one of his daughters he remembered when we were meeting those days on campus and that I said that God is bringing mantle a mantle of people for kingdom financiers and he saw his then little daughter she was rolling under the anointing and he looked at her and was wondering and he said that she got a job and within one year bought a car of over three million and he said he was surprised when God says it, he will do it. If he did it before, he can do it again. Same God right now. Same God right now. If he did it before, if he did it before. When we started the Koinonia worship team, I stopped these guys for many years from going for external ministrations. And I told them, I said, do you know why? I know what God showed me about you. That days will come, you will sing and nations will sing your songs. Stay and be dealt with by the Spirit. Those days, some of them didn't understand because they wanted to go for programs and say, sit down. Sit down. Today, it's amazing the way one by one. It's already starting like droplets, but it's an avalanche. It will come and you will see the songs that come from here. Songs that will mentor nations. Songs of warfare. Songs of victory. Songs of the throne. You see, most times we don't believe men till it's too late. We will say, he said it all. I believe him. I believe you. That's why you see me stand to teach you. Do you know, let me confess, true confession. I was, I had a meeting before coming here. You know, I had a meeting and then um, just briefly met with uh, a family and then a woman before coming, preparing to come for Koinonia. And while I was preparing, I was so tired. I sat down and I didn't know which one to do, to eat or to rest. And I stood, I was so tired. And I was telling the woman, I said, my God, all I want to do now is to sleep. But I just got up. I said, I rebuke that statement. There is a generation to mentor. There are people to raise. And she said, ah, Apostle, I know you. As soon as you are done with all this talk, the zeal of the Lord that is in you, you will quickly go and prepare and stand up. And truly, you see me standing now. I'm done here and I'm counseling for hours. Seven in the morning, I'm out of this city just to go and just perform a function, do a few things and return. Sacrifice. But that happens because God said so. God promised me that he would keep me strong and vibrant. I believed him. You do what I do in the strength of the flesh, you will not be sick, you will die. Yeah. I say it without exaggeration.
you literally will fall down and you will die one day my father warned me and said look my son just do your best take out time once in a while and rest I said I know and I believe I will rest but the king's business requires haste there are destinies to be raised there are impartations to come to nations hallelujah praise the Lord I went to bed to five it was as if I just turned my head and I checked the time and it was morning the last thing I remember was that I was going to take there was water by the side of my bed and a drink and I remember I was preparing that in five minutes I'll just turn and take a sip and I had slept it was already morning and I got up had to brush up on my notes to come why because when you are about his business he will maintain you there are things you cannot lie about not for long it will be clear see let me tell you this God has been faithful to me you see these hands I have laid these hands on different sicknesses and diseases communicable ones I'm not supposed to be alive today based on the things and the people I have touched you must believe God God told me forget about cars and houses focus on me I've raised men already to do that for you I remember when someone came and met me to give me a car I was happy and God said it's not your car just pray for him and let him carry his car and go I want to say God the next time you will give me lift <laughs> but I was happy Do you believe what I share with you? Can you spare me five more minutes? Are you tired? I know you are tired. You are just passionate. But listen, let me tell you this. You must love tomorrow more than today to enter that tomorrow. If you love your today more than tomorrow, the door has closed. Closed by you. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. When I was in secondary school and the fire of God fell upon us, we started a prayer group and a prayer movement called Operation Catacruz. Yes. We would pray sometimes immediately after preps. It was supposed to be a little one hour prayer. And some of these weak spirited people who are feeling sleepy would just tell them, look, go to your hostel and sleep. One hour it will become a vigil i was made the timekeeper of the school in js2 that was the level of the hand of god that was upon my life quarter to five someone would wake me every day without fail quarter to five that was when i started having encounters with this i didn't even know that they were angelic encounters 15 minutes on the dot to five don't tap me i wake up Father, help this generation. In the name of Jesus. Help us to be so consumed by the reality of the realm of the spirit. And the power that that realm wields upon this realm. All you see is not all there is. Hallelujah. So when you hear a word like you are blessed when you hear a word like doors be open many of us just say amen as a christian response to a man of god's prayer but a few people will believe god and take him literally and said when i said amen i said let it be so where is it oh god i said amen i expect an answer hmm. the last that i will give us and then we're done territorial advancement the last key let me five minutes and we are done the power are we ready the power of consistent results one of the kingdom keys allocated for dominating a territory is consistent results
let me tell you this consistent results shows that there is understanding consistent results show that there is knowledge consistent results show that mastery has been attained consistent results years ago I started watching a man who would lift people off wheelchairs and crutches as though it was a joke he would stand and look at them and just pray a simple prayer sometimes even be sarcastic about it and throw the wheelchair and throw the crutch and said walk and that's the end of it in in about six years he raised about nine thousand crutches and wheelchairs his his church is full of crutches around the church I said this is mastery I must go down to see him he was in South Africa and I traveled he's going to be with the Lord now prophet Kobus van Rensburg I traveled to South Africa to meet him and I met him and I told him why I was here I was not there for for pilgrimage I was not there for entertainment I was there for business I said I desire this grace I desire it it is a grace 10,000 crutches cannot be mistaken no many unbelieving members yet they were also raising crutches you could see that they didn't have faith yet they would say walk and joke with it you see many times when the leader that you are under is carrying a grace you will cheaply receive that grace listen when you receive that grace and receive that dimension many times you will see how cheap it works some of you here who are under this ministry and under this covering you will go for meetings casually and just say let's pray and the power of god is here and it will be as if you are acting drama and even you you have not really studied the dynamics of the anointing many people started getting prosperous in living faith before they read about prosperity it was later they found out they were even sinners because they were not tightened yet they were still enjoying abundance say okay lord forgive me now i'll start doing it properly some people were strolling and just saw prayer city prayer was going in and they said let me go and find out what is going on there and from that day they cannot sleep again till they pray because a grace came upon them let me tell you this results are governed by three things one light two please listen results are governed by three things one light two association three graces these are the factors that govern results in this kingdom never forget it light the depth of the spiritual illumination you have as it pertains the area where you want to see result number two association god called abraham and lot went with him and then number three graces if there is any area in your life where you are not commanding results check for these three things one there is a dimension of spiritual illumination that you are lacking number two there is a community of people with that grace that you have not honored and number three there is a dimension of grace that has not rested upon you it is easy to produce results when you know the laws that govern them hallelujah do you know let me tell you as little as this thing our, our time is up as little as what i shared with you is if you understand this mystery my brothers and my sisters there are dimensions that god has cheaply committed to this ministry you will enter into it like a joke you know it pains me when i see certain graces that are so lavishly available but there is no widespread testament of people who have entered that dimension the knowledge you have the spiritual understanding number two your association not just in terms of friends also the covenants the tribe that you come under that you are grafted into and then number three the graces that are upon your life any man who is exposed to these tripartite forces will be a strange man upon the earth when i traveled to south africa to meet prophet kobus van rensburg 
I'd wanted going to meet Robert Lerdon and then Charles and Francis Hunter. Unfortunately, I couldn't meet them. I sat down and I listed like an architect the graces that will construct the house. I listed them and I searched for the individuals that had those graces. Like a chef says, I need salt. Where do we buy salt? Sabo. Where do we? This is how I listed these graces. Like a bee. And I searched for them one by one. I was very, very foolish at a point in my life. I knew that wisdom will be part of the graces that I would need for my life and I would need for this apostolic office. I pursued Dr. Miles Mudok and Bishop David Oyedeko. These were the two dimensions of, of wisdom that came to my life. I saw the wisdom of God at work in their life. And I said, this foolishness must end. I pursued that grace. I pursued it with all my heart. Are we together? Yes. Results. Whoever commands results becomes the leader. Whoever commands results becomes the force to reckon with. I submit to you that many of the dimensions that you see in my life and in this ministry, they are not guesswork. There is an exact knowledge that is back of them. They will continue to be reproduced again and again. When there is increase, when there is the outstretched hand of God, when there is favor, there is prosperity. When there is passion and hunger for God, these are results. Please do not join the people who ignore results. I'm wrapping up. I know the rain is done, but just, just be patient. Make sure as they are coming out, they are still listening, please. You are going to pray for results. Listen to me. I told myself, God, there is no need to be in ministry if I'm not producing results. That you bear fruits and that your fruits abide. Much fruits. Some of you who are visiting this place for the first time will go back and know that God is here. You met him. It's called results. The next time you come, you will not come alone. Let me tell you, empty pews are proof of lack of results. It's an uncomfortable truth, but it is true. Are we together? In fact, empty anything. Emptiness is proof that you do not understand the laws that govern you. I knew, I saw the way pastors used to raise money. Now, please, I'm not being sarcastic with all respect and all honor to men of God and the body of Christ. But I saw the way people were being manipulated to raise money. I saw the way pastors, birthday pastor, I'm, I said, no, this is not Bible. But then I asked myself a question, how will you eat? And how will the ministry thrive? And then I said, I have to go to the word of God and find out. And then I found out that God can open a door for a man that no man can shut. I found out that there was an exactitude to the blessing of God. Let me show you one of the most recent scripture I found. 1 Corinthians 29, 12. I apologize, we are wrapping up. 1 First, First Chronicles 29, 12. 1 Chronicles 29, 12. I saw this scripture in my dream. I was sleeping and this scripture came and I woke up and I saw it and I rejoiced. I said, that means God is shifting me to another dimension. Both riches and what? Honor come from you. You reign over all of them. It's a dangerous scripture. both riches and honor come from thee you reign over all and in thy hand is power and might look at all the things we need in one verse riches honor power might greatness strength god is the owner i saw it in my dream i went to sleep home and i saw that scripture i got up and i searched it I said this is this 
if this scripture were a clot it would have faded by now i've prayed this scripture into my life see i stepped into the grace for favor when i prayed for favor for one month that was my prayer request not for a selfish reason lord a man can carry favor bodily let me be an example of it do you know many times when i pray these things is so that i will bring it and you will receive it's not so much for myself when i received the grace for long life it, it was with speed the day i was coming for koinonia it was as if i was going for my wedding reception give me chance let me stand these people were singing and i couldn't wait for them to finish singing so that i'll climb up i came with a grace that i did not have the grace for long life you can carry graces like a fisherman when you catch something and you push your hook you draw it force it out when you see what it is This kingdom is a kingdom of deep mysteries deep mysteries deep mysteries hallelujah both riches and honor come from you thou reignest over all and in thy hand is power and might and in thy hand is to make great look god is the maker of greatness when god selects you to be great he selects you to be the face of a generation it doesn't matter who thinks what or does not think it god has chosen this ministry god has chosen us by the privilege of his grace to be one of the major pillars of what he's doing in this generation it's an honor we receive he made it so results we are going to pray we have to wrap up listen to me koinonia hear me my heart is pained if your life does not command results let it first start from your life then we'll start commanding results over territories was it not joshua that told the son to stand results there are results that can shut down a nation in one day a time will come kings will come to seek the counsel of god from us and say what is god saying he said kings will entreat your favor when god told me he would give me access to kings and i would speak to kings in this nation i believed him listen it's not pride in two weeks i'm going to be speaking to all the legislators in this country in a breakfast meeting all of them gathered in one place the international conference center and I will be speaking to them the counsel of God when God says it I believe it listen it, this thing is not it's not it's not about a man I hope you understand what I'm saying results are powerful if you doubt results then what are you at results you must insist that my fig tree must bear fruit I'm tired of green leaves lord this fig tree must bear fruit he shall be like a tree that is planted by the streams of water whose leaves does not wither is someone ready to pray please take two minutes blast in tongues and cry honor my life with results oh god results honor my life with results please pray
Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. We're wrapping up. In the name of Jesus. The grace that will cause you to reproduce every result you see here. May that grace rest upon your life. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. The grace that will bring you into strange dimensions. Wonder walking dimensions of results. May that grace rest upon your life. I speak upon your life. Access to kings. May that grace come upon you. Access to kings. In the name of Jesus Christ. Access to kings. In the name of Jesus Christ. I have set before you an open door. I decree and declare the kind of influence that God can put upon a man. Influence is not a carnal desire. It is so that you can rise to a point where the nations can look up to your life. In the name of Jesus, the grace that can cause a generation to look at a man and follow Christ through that man. May that grace rest upon you now. May that grace rest upon you now. The grace for strange signs and wonders. Wonders of the spirit. May that grace come upon you now. May that grace rest upon you now. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Every man who must honor and recognize what you carry, I speak to them by prophecy in this season and in the name of Jesus in this month of October, I command someone must celebrate your grace. Someone must celebrate what you carry for the sake of his majesty. In the name of Jesus, I compel men to discern the grace upon your life. I compel men to discern the hand of God upon you. I compel men to discern the unction upon you. Father, we thank you for tonight. Let the name of the Lord be praised let me pray one prayer concerning favor and your finances please allow me pray it God sees my heart God sees how much I pray for you every time there is a dimension of the blessings of the Lord that I want you to step into and the reason is because it will give you the time to serve him I pray for you in the name of Jesus the wealth that comes by prophecy, I speak to your life. Carry that grace now. 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 I command your bands to be filled with plenty. I speak wine and oil to your treasury. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. The kind of favor that the saints need to rise to the position of influence that will allow them legislate on behalf of the kingdom may the grace for that favor rest upon you enter into prepared blessings let me pray for you multiplied visions and spiritual experiences Hear me the spiritual blindness that stops your eyes from seeing what God is doing I tear that veil now I decree and declare everywhere you find yourself I compel the people there to look up to you as you look up to Christ listen 
Don't sit back doubting what you are saying. No. Every utterance is backed by the throne. I'm not speaking as a man. When God calls men, he backs them. And that every door you must enter in this season. Because we advance through the entrance of doors. I speak to that door. Let it be open for you now. Let it be open for you now. Indeed, it will be said about us that we are a people that the Lord has helped. Marvelously helped like Uzziah. In the name of Jesus. Father, we declare that our territory will come under the influence of your name and your grace. We will never give an inch of our territory to the reign of darkness and Satan. We will stand as watchmen until we see the reality of your power and your glory rest upon our land in the mighty name of jesus christ amen and amen our time is gone you are here and you are saying apostle i want to make it right with jesus apologize because of the rain we've had to stretch but you are here and you are saying i need a fresh start with the lord jesus we have just one minute for you please be careful no moving around carelessly so that we can have those who are coming out to come if you're on your way coming here, whether you are inside, you're outside, I'd like you to boldly, or you are saying, Apostle, I really want to rededicate my life to Christ. I know the implication of this that you have shared. Please boldly summon the courage, take a step of faith as we clap and salute them. Come and stand right at the altar here while I pray for you. God bless you. People are coming. Celebrate them as they come. Koinonia, is this the best you can do? Those coming from outside, please clear the way for them. Clear the way for them. God bless you. God bless you. Koinonia, keep clapping. Let's celebrate them as they come to make Jesus Lord of their lives. Genuinely and truthfully. Dearly beloved, I hope you were blessed by this message. I want you to keep doing something for this man of God, our man of God, Apostle Joshua Salmon. And that is, I want you to keep on praying for him, that the cause of the gospel may have free flow in him, that he may be granted boldness to continue with his commission of Jesus Christ, and that all provisions be given unto him as he continues in this journey of Christianity. And then, don't forget to like this video. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button if you are new here. Don't also forget to leave a comment in the comment section and then keep sharing, keep sharing abroad and let's all keep sharing Jesus. I'll see you again. Bye.